Dear Regina Failing family and friends and all others who are interested in celestial navigation. In this chapter we will look at the planets and we will see that it's very similar to the Sun. Well they are in the solar system. Just a little bit other corrections uh, to determine. But before we dig into this we will have a template which I have made for planning the shots of the planets. First we know when the twilight is and then we will in this chapter determine which planets we will use in the next sunset or the next sunrise. The whole idea now is to do a pre-calculation of where we will expect to see the planets and when we will see expect to see the planets. When is twilight? So we've covered that. But now is the question, where do we expect to see and find the planets? And the definition of where is the direction from us, that's the azimut, and the height of which we will be seeing the planet or the star later on in question. So we will try to find an approximate direction. So that's when we use our hand bearing compass, go on up on deck and look into approximately that direction where to expect the planet. And then we preset the sextant to the expected angle, hz. We look in the direction of the azimut, and by looking into the sextant, we should see something. It should like see look like a well a star or a planet. And when we see something there, that must be the celestial object that we're looking for. So when we found it approximately, then we can do the exact setting. We take it down to the horizon. We measure exactly what angle we measure it and exactly what time we measure it. But that's the second phase. So here we are talking about the first phase, namely to pre-calculate at what azimut and at what height we expect to see the planets or the stars. So let's start with the planets. Now, looking at this quite awkward looking chart here, which is printed on the, uh, in the Daily Almanac, it does look a bit frightening, but it's not as bad as you think. And what you do see here is the month on the bottom, January, February, March, April, May, June. That makes sense. And then there is a time scale to the left, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And at 12 o'clock, because that's the time, there's quite a lot happening there. There are quite many planets, especially the Sun. The Sun is the one that goes along the 12 o'clock line from left to right. What does that mean? That means the time that the corresponding planet is passing Greenwich, the meridian. Now the Sun is passing the meridian, Greenwich, at 12 o'clock, more or less, as we have learned, which also makes sense. It's noon in Greenwich at midday, at 12 o'clock. This isn't the case with the other planets, by the way, which we soon will see. So we can be happy enough to have such a regular star, namely the Sun, that is always at 12 o'clock in Greenwich, and then later in our position at our longitude, depending on where we are on the Earth. So this chart is showing what's happening at Greenwich. And then we have to calculate ourselves at what time this happens at our longitude. Now it's not the absolute figure which is important. It is more to see where the planets are. If they are exactly at the same position as the Sun is, or is it running before the Sun, or are the planets running after the Sun? And that is important to decide which planets we will use in the morning and which planets we will use in the evening. Now, the Sun passes at 12 o'clock, I said, at Greenwich, and that's why it has a, it's an almost straight line all the way across. There's a couple of minutes difference, so sometimes it's, a, it's at 11.55, for instance, in October, November there, it is a, a bit early, and sometimes it is a bit 
later, so in February, March, you can see the sun's line being a couple of minutes after 12 o'clock. Now, if a planet is at the same position as the sun, it would be very difficult to shoot it because it would rise at the same time as the sun and set at the same time as the sun. But if the star is moving ahead of the sun, we could see it in the morning. So that means that the planet is first at Greenwich or first it is rising. And then a couple of hours later, the sun is at Greenwich or the sun is rising then the good thing is the star is up already when the sun is still not. So we could see the star, star, or the planet, I mean, we could see the planet before the sunrise. Now, on the other hand, if a planet is running behind the sun, that means this, the planet is later than the sun. So first is the sun at Greenwich, and thereafter comes the planet at Greenwich. That means that the sun sets in the evening first, and you can still see the planet, and thereafter, three, four hours later, the planet sets. That would be practical. So that's, let's look where the planets are. If you look at the dotted line for Venus, you can see that from January to approximately end of May, uh, it is running behind because it is it is about at 15 o'clock all the way until end of April, beginning of May. Then it becomes more and more at the same time as the sun, and then it goes over to the other side. So in July, August, September, and October, it is about at nine o'clock. So that means that it's three hours earlier than. Uh, the sun. So it's exactly there uh, between May and June where the Venus has the same time, the same position at the same time as the sun. We would not be able to distinguish it from the sun because it would just lie in one line. It would be setting and rising exactly at the same time. But if you look here, if it is running early, then the Venus could be seen in the morning, because first the Venus comes up, it becomes a morning star, as they say, despite the fact that it's a planet, and then the sun rises. And if you are on the top side of the sun, these are the evening planets. So you can plan your sight, because that's what this is all about. You want to plan to see what can I see in the morning and what can I see in the evening. Uh, now, this shaded area, as I said, it's much too close to the sun, so that's not good. So it should be more than, say, two hours, three hours ahead or after, but not 12 hours after, because then the sun and the planets are on the opposite sides. So that is not uh, possible to shoot at all. So which planets would we use in an evening and in the morning for this year? Because, you see... This drawing changes from year to year, and that's why it's printed in the nautical almanac for the corresponding year. So in this year, I would use Venus as an evening planet in the early months, and as a morning planet in the late months, whereof around May and June, you wouldn't be able to use Venus because it's too close to the Sun. Now, the second best planet to use further to Venus would be Jupiter. And Jupiter we can see as a morning planet in the early months and as a evening planet in the late months. And in the middle of the year it would be opposite side than the Sun, so that would be not possible to shoot it in the middle of the uh, summer this year. So this would be all right if it hadn't been a problem in exactly the year this one is printed namely that the Jupiter and Saturnus are so close to each other. So I think it would be difficult to distinguish these two. In other years, Jupiter and Saturnus lay further apart, so it's much easier to distinguish these two. Mars is uh, available in December as a very 
evening planet, a very late one, or you could use uh, Mars uh, but, uh, uh, as a good morning planet in the very early months of the year. Mars is also very uh, quite faint, but you could use it. It's, it's quite okay. So, we want to plan which, which planets we should be using. So we want to know how much are they ahead and how much are they behind the Sun. And if they are behind, they are in the red area, we can use it as an evening planet. And if they are running before, we can use it as a morning planet. That we write down in the summary to the right. So what we do is we look at when is it sunrise and choose the planets which are ahead and write down how much time they are ahead to get the rise of the planet. And then we know approximately when does the planet rise. So we can look at the horizon, see it rising, waiting until twilight appears so we can see the horizon, and then we can shoot these planets in the morning. And the same thing in the evening. We write down this time of sunset in UTC at our longitude. We look how much the corresponding planets are behind, if they are at all. They can't be ahead and behind at the same time, obviously. So if you've used them on, in the blue box, you can't use them in the red box. And then you can set right the time when the planet in question sets. The numbers there, be, uh, uh, before the corresponding planets on top, 1, 4, 2, 3, is the order of brightness. So Venus is the absolute brightest planet we have on our sky. Then comes Jupiter then comes Saturnus, and then comes Mars. So when we have chosen which ones we want to use in the morning and which one we have in the evening, we can write these down in the next part of the template. So let's assume we have chosen two for the morning. So we'll only go talk about the blue box here. So we move the two planets we have chosen that we will be using, or only one. So we write down the civil twilight in the box on the top, and then we write down the names or the symbols of the planets. And now we look up the following. We use the daily almanac. That's why I have this blue book on the left. And write down the approximate declination of these planets. Look up the approximate Greenwich hour angle at full hour. Check the increment in the back of the book. Then we write down the Greenwich hour angle at the twilight and our position. Then choose our own longitude, approximately, where we are, according to that reckoning, and find a local hour angle. We go further down and use the site reduction table, exactly the one that we have been using before. And then you can easily read off the HC, the altitude, and the azimut. So why are we doing all this? It's all for preparation. Because with this filled in, you can exactly say at twilight, that's when you go on deck with your hand bearing compass and your sextant and your clock, you can exactly tell in which direction, the azimut, you should be seeing the planet. And to the very right here in the column, you can see it says ST, that's the star. So we will very soon do exactly the same thing with the star. And the good thing is that you will do the use the same template uh, template and go through this four planets and stars at the same time. So when you have twilight, when you're on, on, on deck, you will be having everything prepared. You know that if you look into one direction, you will see one planet, into the other direction, another altitude, you will see another planet and also a couple of stars. So my hope is that this template will be very useful. When you've done this now, when you have pre prepared everything for the planets, it's back to basics again. You go back and use a very similar template like we have used for the Sun. The only difference is, is it's very minor. There, there are some small minor corrections to, which are a bit different with, to, between the Sun and the planets. And that is that you have a, a refraction correction, which is a bit uh, different when you go from HS to HO, the observed altitude. You have a monthly correction, but that that's so easy. You just it's it's printed in the um, uh, in the almanac, and then also 
the planets are not so nicely exact when it comes to the increment, so we have a v factor to take there into consideration. But these are three little extra or different uh, corrections to be made, and when we do the exercise, you will be uh, seeing that it's very similar to the Sun. Just don't mix these two up, the, the template for the Sun and the template for the planets. So let's go over and do some exercises and when we've done that uh, you will see that it's all about preparation for the twilight and then it's just like the sun and great fun. <laughs>